Congressman, uh, Eric Swalwell, the congressman from California, has been caught in a very embarrassing and compromising situation involving involvement with a Chinese spy. Should he be stripped of his committee assignment on the Intelligence Committee? I mean, this is a pretty serious deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have to ask the speaker that because she's the one who put him on. I think one of the other questions we need to ask Speaker Pelosi is what did she know when she put him on the committee? Had she been briefed on this issue? And frankly, I think, uh, Governor, the, 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 the real concern here is the different treatment between Republicans and Democrats. Now, we've sort of grown to expect that from, from so many, but, but they were given defensive briefings. Remember, uh, Feinstein, Senator Feinstein got a defensive briefing when she was close to some Chinese spy. Uh, Representative Swalwell got a defensive briefing. But Republicans don't. We don't get defensive briefings. We get set up. Remember when they tried to, they go, they go up to New York on January oh, yeah. 6 and, and give the president, Comey gives President Trump the briefing on the dossier, not to brief him, but he did that so they could leak it and then have a story and have CNN and BuzzFeed run the story about the dossier. So uh, I think that is a big concern many of us have, this unequal treatment under the law, which is, which is not supposed to be how it works in our great country. It was very fascinating that Swalwell's own response to this was that it was Trump's fault. Well, of course it was. Everything is. <laughs> I found out the most uh, just incredulous thing I'd ever heard, uh, that President Trump, after the election, would somehow leak this out about Swalwell. I mean, if he had it before, he certainly would have pulled the trigger on it sooner. Yeah. But, but what a ridiculous excuse. And, uh, I mean, what do you do, yeah. laugh in his face when you bump into him in the hall? Well, you you would you would laugh at all this if it if it wasn't so serious. And and again, look at the double standard. For four years, they accused the president of working with foreign governments, both the whole Russia scam and then, of course, the impeachment issue, all about him entanglements with foreign governments. When it turns out, it was actually the Biden family who was engaged in all kinds of foreign entanglements with all kinds of foreign nations. Um, and those same people who are making those accusations, we come to find out, oh. They were cozying up to Russian, or excuse me, Chinese spies. So um, it's frustrating. You, you, you want to laugh at it, but it's serious as well. And we'll see what uh, we'll see what Speaker Pelosi does when it comes to the Intel Committee in the next Congress. Congressman, another thing the president's being blamed for is uh, the Hunter Biden controversy, and yet now we find out that the FBI has been uh, investigating Hunter Biden for tax issues for quite some time. Yeah. Never released that before the election. I'm I'm once again positive. <laughs> that the president wasn't the source of the information. But is Hunter Biden and ultimately Joe Biden a national security concern because of the uh, ties to China and some of the information that, uh, that we're beginning to find out? Well, it's certainly worth investigating. I'm glad there's an investigation going on. Like you, uh, Governor, I wish we would have known about this uh, a while back. I wish we'd have frankly known about the appointment or, or actually the designation of Mr. Durham as now a special counsel. That happened in October as well. Um, but yeah, we need an investigation. One of our members in the Judiciary Committee, uh, Congressman Beck, uh, or, or Buck, excuse me, has called for uh, special counsel for the Hunter Biden situation as well. We may in fact need that. So um, the American people want to get to the truth. We owe it to them to get to the truth. We owe it to them to have the right kind of investigation. Let's hope that happens as we move forward. You were in the middle of a lot of the hearings where all we heard was Russia, Russia, Russia. It was Russia that uh, interfered with the 2016 elections, even though uh, a $40 million investigation by some uh, uh, real Democrat lapdogs didn't reveal a doggone thing to that effect. Should we have been worried about China all along and not so much Russia? And yeah. why were the Democrats so uh, adamant about pushing the Russia narrative and ignoring the China narrative? Yeah, I mean, this this is just what they do. They, they've attacked the president for four years in spite of their relentless attacks. It's been an amazing term the president has had, done more of what he said he would do than any president in my lifetime. Um, but that's just who they are, they attack, and you're right. China China is, is, is dangerous. This is the first president to stand up to him, stand up to him on trade policy, stand up to him on, on stealing intellectual property rights. I mean, this is the first president to do it, and so many Americans appreciate that fact. That's one of the reasons I think we had this amazing economy, growing wages for middle class and working class people, is because this president was willing to do the right things, willing to do what he said. But the Democrats, because of their just constant attacks on the president, they didn't want to do what needed to be done. Let's hope, uh, as we all move forward, that we can continue to focus on just how dangerous China is. Uh, we were all told that the Republicans were going to lose a huge number of seats in this election. There would be a great big blue wave. Well, it turned out that that blue wave turned uh, bright red, and you're going to have a, a bunch of new colleagues on the oh, Republican yeah. side. Yeah. 
what happened? How did the press miss it? And, uh, you know, how, how big a deal is it that there's close to parity in the House going into the next legislative session? Yeah, I mean, I think it's because we ran good candidates. I give I yeah. give our, our leader, Leader McCarthy, a lot of credit, but we recruited some good can- good good women, uh, conservative candidates who ran great campaigns. So uh, when you have good candidates, you got a good chance to win. And when you have the right message, when Democrats are talking about defunding the police, Democrats are talking about the Green New Deal, Democrats are talking about taking away your guns, taking away your money, taking away your plastic drinking straws, and taking away your private health insurance, a lot of Americans say we don't want that. Which, which just reinforces this idea that 75 million Americans instinctively know something's not right here. How can all this happen down ticket where we had these amazing results and the president gets 11 million more votes than he got last time and somehow comes up short? We went 27 of the 27 toss-up states in the House of Representatives and the president comes up short. He increases his votes with Hispanic Americans, African Americans, wins 19 of the 20 bellwether states, wins Ohio by eight, Iowa by eight, Florida by three, and somehow comes up short, that's why it's important we continue to investigate everything we can and figure out what exactly happened. Because, Governor, this is something that really scares me. Right now, over 70% of that 75 million think the election was stolen. That's more than a third of the electorate. When you have a third of the electorate that concerned about what took place, that is not a healthy situation for our culture, for our country. So we owe it to them as well to get to the bottom of what exactly happened. Well, I hope we do. Congressman, I want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, Always great to uh, visit with you. And thank you for your leadership on the Hill. We need uh, more folks like you, and I hope we have some folks on their way to do just that. Congressman Jim Jordan, great to have you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you. And especially with the possibility of a Biden presidency looming over us, I'm sure glad we have men like Jim Jordan around to fight for American values. Now, you can keep up with the congressman on his website, jordan.house.gov and on Twitter and Parley, or as we say in most of America, Parler.